The Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources joins me now from Egypt, His Excellency Tariq Al Mullah. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. And it's great to have this opportunity to talk to you. Um, it's been a while since we've talked, of course, and everybody very interested in terms of what's happening in Egypt. So maybe just bring us up to date and then we have a few other things we'll talk about. Well, uh, thank you, Etna, for this uh, event. Uh, I have been uh, joining uh, Adi Beck now uh, after two years of non coming because of the COVID-19. Uh, what happened uh, in Egypt is not different than what happened globally because of the pandemic. However, we, we were able, uh, because we had been uh, doing our economic reform, so somehow the negative impact of the COVID-19 on our economy was not that hard. We were able to overcome the challenge and uh, we continue to do the business as much as we could. Of course, there are external challenging forces uh, putting pressure on the uh, business as usual. However, with the proven uh, success stories that we had over the last few years, we continue to have some uh, growth in our GDP, some continuous uh, increase in natural gas production. And we had also some good signing of some exploration concession uh, with our uh, major uh, IOCs. So in general, we are progressing well. We have been also able to uh, identify our natural gas resource as a, 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 let me say, an energy of choice, whereby we are expanding all our uh, activities uh, in order to uh, يعني, benefit out of this uh, natural resource to our economy. So briefly, we've been doing somehow good. Now here at Adipec 2021, a lot of talk about gas. Gas really as the, the transition fuel without a doubt, but really as, as, as a very, very solid fuel in huge demand. And I think, you know, it's a very exciting time for gas. And for you, for Egypt, this is hugely important, isn't it? It is important. And uh, from a country that was heavily importing LNG up to the year 2018, to having uh, self-sufficiency uh, and then uh, resumed uh, exports. So we are exporting uh, gas through pipelines to neighboring countries like Jordan. And we are also exporting our natural gas through LNG cargoes from our uh, LNG facilities. Uh, from one side, uh, this is uh, uh, a way by uh, with what we have seen now uh, recently with the extremely high prices of LNG and natural gas globally. So I think that we have to uh, maximize our uh, exports in order to make sure that we also realize some uh, uh, earnings and some revenues by which we can uh, then uh, put them again into our business activities and into the economic growth of Egypt. So uh, from one side, uh, capitalizing of natural gas so expanding projects like uh, conversion of uh, uh, vehicles to CNG, uh, expansion of household connections rather than having LPG uh, bottles for cooking, uh, expansion of as well uh, uh, petrochemical projects in order to get more of downstream uh, products that the market needs. So really, uh, we are accelerating all the projects that is needed for uh, gas. So uh, upstream and uh, midstream and downstream. Now, of course, all of this needs cooperation. As you said, you know, you're exporting and you're in touch with a lot of people in the region as well. Talk to me just a little bit about um, the East Mediterranean Gas Forum. East Mediterranean Gas Forum has not been just an idea. We are now uh, talking about reality. We have uh, a forum that is up and running and not only by the founding countries, but also we have been joined by new members. So we have France as a member now, and we have the United States as an observer as well. So now we have eight members and we have uh, three uh, observers. And now we have identified uh, some priority projects uh, to cooperate together. Meanwhile, uh, we are also having on ground um, identified also some priorities whereby the natural gas uh, that has been discovered in Israel is coming uh, through pipelines to Egypt to export, as well as we are now identifying potential projects with Cyprus and potential projects with uh, Greece, as well as perhaps uh, phase two in Israel. This is from one side. From the other side, we are continuously uh, continuing uh, exports of natural gas to Jordan. And currently we are talking 
uh, with our Lebanese uh, brothers in order to uh, expand also our gas to their uh, domestic use. So uh, I think this is uh, something that is doing well. Uh, meanwhile, I think that um, the idea of having uh, the uh, forum itself is to have more of cooperation between the countries in order to develop these resources, not only about um, producing uh, natural gas and exporting it through the facilities, but rather to identify common projects whereby we could uh, uh, maximize um, the, let me say, the added value of the natural gas. And this is by creating uh, some opportunities for private sector and independent in order to uh, also join these efforts in having a market and a market in this region for natural gas. So a lot going on without a doubt. Now you've been also very busy, of course, and you came back from COP26. Um, but uh, more importantly, you're getting ready for COP27. So talk to me a little bit about you know, where you're going to take that momentum and make sure that Cairo is ready for a great meeting uh, next year. It is a big responsibility, definitely, uh, hosting uh, COP27 and after important uh, 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 conference and event in uh, Glasgow uh, as COP26 ended, I think that uh, there is a huge opportunity as well. Therefore, uh, being there, uh, attending some of the sessions and um, having some good and fruitful meetings with, with uh, different stakeholders there at Glasgow, I think we are getting prepared now and we started already from our side to have uh, some discussions with our uh, partners, our stakeholders, some of the independent organizations, as well as, as uh, 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 some governments as well, in order to align ourselves and in order to make sure that our uh, COP27 next year would be a successful one. We want to deliver the right messages. We want to deliver uh, a common uh, understanding and to let uh, uh, the developing countries uh, hear what the uh, develop, uh, uh, I mean, the developing countries uh, would be able to send its voice to the developed countries and to echo what we need in order to make sure that we align our efforts for the coming years. And of course, we are all committed to the gas uh, greenhouse gas emissions, to uh, uh, the uh, carbon capture efforts as well. So we are all committed to the Paris agreements, but we need really to be realistic. We need to have the adequate and proper funds for uh, applying the technology for making this happen. And of course, with all of that uh, in the, the near future, even closer to that, we have Egypt's coming. So we're going to be back in uh, Cairo with you in February. Talk to me just a little bit about that. Well, uh, Egypt uh, is our pride. Uh, we are happy that uh, the uh, next year in February, it will be the fifth edition. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19, we did not have last year's edition. Uh, this means that we have been uh, six years now in this important event. It has been uh, uh, a very successful window for us to expose what we had uh, as uh, success stories. But meanwhile, uh, opened the opportunity for different uh, companies uh, globally and different countries that would like to join and take some experience and take the uh, uh, the event uh, uh, that is happening in Cairo each year uh, to be an occasion for them to meet, to do some uh, business uh, uh, transactions and to learn about the new uh, uh, technologies and the offers and the offering that being made by different uh, vendors, suppliers and technology makers. So we are very excited. We have uh, uh, sent and we have expanded our invitation to a lot of uh, different uh, global CEOs and different ministers all over the country, all over the, the, the countries, and as well uh, uh, some uh, good, um, I would say, uh, keynote speakers, uh, good um, uh, decision makers, that we would like to have them with us in this important event next year. And just before I let you go, of course, it's great to have you here at ADIPEC. It's very, very important to have you here. Just talk to me a little bit about being back here in 2021, the energy that we're seeing out here, and of course, being part of it, and you know, your contribution to as a speaker. It's been great to have you here as well. I'm very proud to participate uh, at ADIPEC. Uh, perhaps this is my seventh or eighth time that I come, and uh, 
actually uh, being uh, among the uh, active participants, whether in the panels and the opening ceremonies or even in the ADIPEC awards. So uh, I feel that uh, uh, we are uh, being part of the success uh, as uh, contributors to this important event. The observation that I've seen that there are a lot of people, a uh, lot of uh, people uh, enthusiastic, a uh, lot of activities uh, running uh, here and there, everywhere in the exhibition, in the panels, in the meeting rooms, uh, everybody is engaged, everybody is committed to do something because now we are also getting uh, uh, out of an important uh, event which was Glasgow Cup 26. So people are busy to uh, get the solutions and to get uh, the answers of the many questions that were raised as well as we have seen a very important uh, keynote speakers at the ceremonies, whether at the opening or at the panels, and uh, they delivered very important key messages to the world. So uh, I think uh, it was a successful uh, event this year. Uh, it was waited uh, for two years now. Uh, I uh, believe in Adibec uh, as usual, and of course uh, with the uh, sponsorship of uh, the leaders uh, of Sheikh Mohammed and uh, all our fellow brothers in uh, UAE. I think this is an event uh, that will continue to flourish and to be a landmark for the oil and gas industry globally.